Here is a histopathological slide of a bone marrow aspirate from a patient with acute myelogenous leukemia stained with right GM sustain. The blasts lack differentiating features and were non-reactive to the Sudan type B black stain and myeloperoxidase staining procedures. More than 20% of the blast cells expressed myeloid antigens here with CD13 and CD33 positivity. The blasts were terminal transfers negative and non-reactive with antibodies to lymphocytes. ROTs were also not found. All of these features narrowed the diagnosis to the M0 variant of the AML. Here's another histopathological image in both panel A and panel B. The panel A shows a classic acute myelocytic leukemia containing adipose tissue abnormal blood vessels with thickened walls and spindle-shaped smooth muscle-like cells. The whitish columns seen on the upper portion of the slide represents the fat tissues. The hollow surrounded by pinkish color seen right here on the right lower portion of the slide is representative of all the blood vessels. As seen here in panel B, there is epithelioid acute myelogenous leukemia containing round to polygonal epithelioid cells with round nucleoli and abundant granular cytoplasm. Here is another histopathological image of acute myeloid leukemia from the bone marrow aspirate of a patient with AML of the variant M2. This was diagnosed with the help of flow cytometry. The blasts here are slightly more mature than the M1 type of blasts. The cytoplasm may contain multiple fine granules as you can appreciate here. And there are also R rods which can be seen here in this cell. These were stained with right GM sustain. Here is another histopathological image of acute myeloid leukemia. In this image you can appreciate a bone marrow aspirate of a patient with AML. And at this level of magnification, the multiple nucleoli and the cytoplasmic granules are finely appreciated along with the narrow R rods which are seen right here in this cell. Here is another important histopathological image of a bone marrow aspirate from a patient who was diagnosed to have acute myelogenous leukemia. In this patient, the white blood cell count was more than 70,000 per microliter and was comprised almost entirely of myeloblasts with numerous azurophilic granules. And you can really appreciate how the cytoplasm is still quite evidently available. Whereas on the flip side, if you would compare this to a slide with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, there's only thin cytoplasm or no cytoplasm at all and is mostly occupied by the nucleus of the cell. Here is another bone marrow aspirate of a patient with AML and the histopathological slide has been made. The majority of the cells have a rim of pale to slightly basophilic agranular cytoplasm as you can appreciate here in this image. The nuclei have finely dispersed chromatin and prominent nucleoli as well. Here is a stepwise schematic of the development of acute myeloid leukemia in patients with Down syndrome. During fetal hematopoiesis, about 10-30% to 30 of patients with Down syndrome can develop a transient myeloproliferative disorder, of which about 20% can witness death. Most of the other patients have an apparent resolution of the transient myeloproliferative disorder. The GATA1 mutations in prenatal hematopoietic stem cells with trisomy 21 result in a transient myeloproliferative disorder. After apparent resolution of the transient myeloproliferative disorder, additional mutations cooperating with mutant GATA1 result in a transformation to myelodysplastic syndrome and acute myelogenous leukemia in a subset. Here's another image showing bone marrow aspirate from a patient with AML. The blast cells seen here are quite large with a moderate amount of grayish blue cytoplasm. 
distinct nucleoli can also be appreciated and and there are no cytoplasmic granules that can be appreciated here in this image. Here's another bone marrow smear from a patient with acute myelomonocytic leukemia, which was diagnosed on flow cytometry. The two promyelocytes on the left right here with basoplastic cytoplasm containing coarse acerophilic granules contrast with the two promonocytes which are located here on the right side which have abundant pale cytoplasm and delicate nuclear folds. Here's another histopathological image of a bone marrow smear from a patient with acute myelomonocytic leukemia with increased marrow eosinophils and there's also associated inversion of the chromosome number 16 abnormality in this patient as diagnosed on flow cytometry. The two eosinophilic precursors in this field shown right here show prominent basophilic staining granules. Here's another histopathological image of a bone marrow smear from a 23-year-old female with acute myeloid leukemia with maturation associated with a translocation of A21. The myeloblasts have abundant cytoplasm and cytoplasmic vacuoles as shown here. And one of the myeloblasts also contain a prominent R rod, which can be appreciated as we zoom in right here. Here's another histopathological blood smear from a patient with acute monocytic leukemia of a differentiated variant. The predominant promonocytes have abundant cytoplasm with scattered myeloperoxidase negative azurophilic granules as shown here. The nuclei have delicate folds and creases and as you can appreciate here that the nucleoli are quite inconspicuous. The promyelocytic leukemia monoclonal antibody staining in acute promyelocytic leukemia. Panel A shows normal staining whereas panel B here shows acute promyelocytic leukemia which demonstrates a microspeckled pattern of promyelocytic leukemia monoclonal antibody staining. Here's another histopathological image of a bone marrow smear from a patient with erythroleukemia, a megaloblastoid erythroblast, which is shown right here, is shown along three myeloblasts. Here's another histopathological image of a bone marrow smear from a patient with acute monocytic leukemia with maturation. This field here shows a range of maturation of monocytic cells if you can appreciate. Here is another histopathological image which shows a bone marrow smear from a patient with acute megakaryoblastic leukemia. The panel A here shows large blast cells and promegakaryocytes and the latter cells are larger than the blast and have coarse nuclear chromatin and irregularly shaped nuclei. Whereas the panel B here shows staining of these cells with a monoclonal antibody to the platelet glycoprotein 3A. Here's another beautiful histological image of a peripheral blood smear from a patient with acute monoblastic leukemia. The two monoblasts on the left have abundant cytoplasm with numerous azerophilic granules, as you can appreciate right here and the nuclear membrane of the promonocyte on the right side has delicate folds and creases as we've discussed earlier. This is a histopathological image of a patient with acute promyelocytic leukemia during treatment with tretinoin malignant promyelocytes in acute promyelocytic leukemia begin to differentiate into more mature neutrophils and the cells acquire secondary granules and the nuclear chromatin becomes much more condensed in comparison with the delicate nuclear chromatin as seen with AML. Here is a bone marrow aspirate from a patient with hypergranular variant of acute promyelocytic leukemia. The cells in the top center and far left both of them they contain numerous intertwining R rods which is distinctly seen right here. Here's another blood smear from a patient with microgranular variant of the acute promyelocytic leukemia. The promyelocytes vary in size and the degree of cytoplasmic basophilia. 
The cytoplasm contains abundant fine azerophilic granules and the nuclei are markedly lobulated and invaginated. Here's a lymph nodal biopsy showing positive staining for the terminal deoxytransferase, which is a common enzyme which is seen in more immature forms of the cells as well as in lymphoblasts. The malignant promyelocytes in the more common hypergranular variant of acute promyelocytic leukemia have characteristic large reddish blue or sometimes dark purple granules in their cytoplasm as shown here and the nucleus is often folded, indented or sometimes it is dumbbell shaped as shown here. Here is a bone marrow aspirate from a patient with acute promyelocytic leukemia. The cytoplasm of these promyelocytes contain densely packed bright pinkish sometimes reddish blue or dark purple granules. Note that the cell on the bottom left has a single R-rod right here. Here is another bone marrow aspirate from a patient with acute promyelocytic leukemia. Note that some of the abnormal promyelocytes have abundant R-rods as shown here on the far left filling the entire cytoplasm. Here is a peripheral smear from a patient with acute myeloid leukemia. There are two myeloblasts which are large cells with high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio as well as you can appreciate that the presence of nucleoli and each myeloblast has a pink rod-like structure the R-rod in their cytoplasm. It is seen in both the cells which are pointed in the center of the field. Here is another bone marrow aspirate smear from a patient with acute promyelocytic leukemia. Most of the cells here are abnormal promyelocytes with folded sometimes some of the cells show bilobed, dumbbell or reniform shaped nuclei with abundant granular cytoplasm. Sometimes the granules can obscure the details of the nucleus. Here is another peripheral smear from a patient with microgranular variant of acute promyelocytic leukemia. As you can appreciate here that the white blood cell count in the microgranular type of acute promyelocytic leukemia is usually elevated and the cells are identified by their bilobed, dumbbell-shaped or reniform nuclei as shown here in this 1-2 cells which are present in the center top of the fetal. The cells have no recognizable granules but granules are in fact present and can be seen by electron microscopy. Despite the sublight microscopic nature of the granules, the cells are still strongly positive for the myeloperoxidase reaction. Here is another peripheral smear from a patient with the typical hypergranular variant of acute promyelocytic leukemia. The white cell count in this type of the APL is usually low with only a few circulating malignant promyelocytes. The abnormal promyelocytes frequently have bilobed or sometimes dumbbell shaped nuclei with granular cytoplasm. They can often be difficult to recognize due to their scarcity, but when seen, they should immediately raise the possibility of acute promyelocytic leukemia. Here's another histopathological image of a bone marrow aspirate from a patient with acute promyelocytic leukemia. The myeloblasts contain large numbers of azeophilic cytoplasmic granules, which almost obscure the nuclear outlines. Evaluation of suspected familial acute leukemia and myelodysplastic syndrome. Patients with myelodysplastic syndrome, acute lymphoblastic or acute myelocytic leukemia should be evaluated with the proper history. If a personal or family history of cancer or systemic symptoms are noted, such patients should be referred for a comprehensive cancer risk assessment. If no such history is available, family history should be re-evaluated at time of pre-stem cell transplant evaluation and at least every five years. Patients with a family history of cancer like myelodysplastic syndrome, acute myelocytic or acute lymphoblastic leukemia, patients with aplastic anemia or certain early onset cancers or multiple close relatives with cancer 
along with personal or family history of systemic findings, should be further evaluated. Patients with MDS or acute leukemia or aplastic anemia only should be evaluated for a defective RUNX1 gene, GATA type 2 gene, CEBPA gene, ANKRD26, ETV6, DDX41, TERT, TERC, SRP72, and genomic duplication of the long arm of chromosome number 14 and the PAX5 gene defect. If the patients have a history or their family have a history of MDS or aplastic anemia or acute leukemia along with solid tumors, then a further evaluation of TP53, TERC, TERT, and other inherited cancer syndromes should be looked for. Some of the important systemic findings include deafness, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis, atypical mycobacterial infections, cutaneous or anogenital warts, immunodeficiency, primary lymphedema, early gray hair, early onset head and neck cancers, oral leukoplakias, skin pigmentation changes, pulmonary fibrosis, liver cirrhosis, early onset anogenital cancers, nail dysplasias, platelet dysfunctions, or bleeding diathesis. That concludes a comprehensive video on acute myelogenous leukemia. We hope that you liked our video and we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Thank you for watching.